I read cap vintage digital clocks and play with cars but I've never recapped anything for a car It just occurred to me that maybe I should do a little filming here before I dive in totally and talk about a little something that's showing up in 80s and 90s vintage Ford vehicles at the very least. Yeah, that's a capacitor. So these computers have three capacitors in them. I guess they call them EEC, IV, or EEC4, or whatever. This one's a 1994 truck, F4T. And I understand that these part numbers are all the same, a 12A650. Um, I think the most important thing here is your maybe this is the programming or calibration. This KIDA one. This is out of a 1994 Ford Bronco with a E4OD automatic transmission and a 5.8 liter engine. And this vehicle's been sitting around a while. We decided to take a peek in and we found the beginning of a nightmare, which I think can be salvaged. So we'll get these undesoldered out of here. This is a practice one. And I intend to see how this goes and then do a more important one in my own vehicle. A 1996 F-150 with low miles. I'm thinking a preemptive strike on that one because that vehicle is still functioning with no issues at this point. But I do feel as you get inside because these, a lot of these actually are starting to do this now. This is 2025. So if left unchecked, You'll see the other videos out, out there on this. These capacitors will leach out their electrolyte and destroy the board and create all kinds of running symptoms and or leave you with a dead vehicle. Or one that's operating horribly at the very best. Let's get soldering. This one was pretty easy. This one I gotta clear a hole yet. That was a little bit more corroded. That one presented a little bit more difficulty. The initial melting on the solder is tricky. You gotta get some of the conformal coating off. Also, the corrosion adds another layer of problem when trying to melt the solder. So scraping and trying to get into the solder a little bit prior to heating it seems to work. And the last one here is the most corroded. And I'm just not going to bore you with those details, but I'll uh, tell you what I did after that one. This is one that's removed. And the leg that was left in the board that was not attached to the capacitor anymore. At least they fall out pretty easily because these holes are nicely oversized, which makes this job easier. Mind you, prior to taking these out, if you decide to take this task on yourself, always, always, always mark your polarity and get your geographic layout and your values before diving in. That way you can install the new ones properly. 
what we're using here is a combination of a soldering iron with a very small tip a plunger type solder sucker which does not always do the job and we have some solder wick and a little proper or a flux paste lots of q-tips for cleaning the shrapnel and little bits of corrosion and solder chunks along with some denatured alcohol maybe some miscellaneous scraping tools and what really seems to help is these flush cutters a good pair of those the ends of the <coughs> leads are bent over and if you try and nip those off beforehand that makes removing the component a little easier by then just heating the pad and then on the underside levering the capacitor out of the hole carefully just making sure everything's properly heated and just cutting some of that off makes that a little easier. Oh, and don't forget the solder. We're using 031 here. That's the diameter. And sometimes a little fresh solder on an old joint helps get things going. And I seem to be getting a hang of this. That capacitor and lead came right out. It seems to help is a little bit of this paste dip the solder and iron right in that quick a little fresh solder on the end of the tip and then heat it from the back side and while reaching on the opposite side just a little pressure on a component and it popped right out and rolled right down here and the other side, heating it from the back side again, the, because of the size of the hole being large, the broken lead more or less almost fell all the way out this side. And then what this is what's left, we have to go in and scrape some of that conformal coating, the loose stuff, what seems to be the discolored areas seems to come right up and that has to be all removed in the areas that are darkened and then cleaned thoroughly to stop further deterioration of the board and then the q-tips and the alcohol seem to help in that and then a final inspection before putting the new components back in this here I think is a tantalum capacitor and some of the corrosion has spread around that so we'll have to clean that I'm assuming that's a tantalum capacitor those usually last but when they do fail they short I'm not sure if that's a problem in these but the electrolytics definitely are so that's what we're going for here we are cleaned up combination of this scraper gently any of the black areas to further lift up the conformal coating and get rid of the black in attempt to try and stop the corrosion in its tracks and then gently very carefully not to destroy anything else around it a little brushing to make the copper shiny again Actually, one of these is better. Fiberglass sanding pen. It's very aggressive, so be careful. But that dark spot is now shiny, as you can see. And then we'll cover that with probably clear coat. Just that area, front and back. 
as well as the other areas which have just lifted the conformal coating but didn't corrode the board so that's good news and then over here same thing and there was a trace over here that had a little black on it and just scraped the black away happy to see the trace is still intact and everything looks pretty good so that's the worst of it I think this thing will live again okay capacitor is used 247 microfarad capacitors at 16 volt came out an old school electronic store by us still around and 47 microfarad at 50 volt you can go with higher voltage ratings but keep the same capacitance and we have two of those and then the other one is a 10 microfarad at 63 volt we have a 10 microfarad at I think 100 volts 105 degree C rated capacitors here for the best quality our polarity was marked before pulling the old capacitors out on our little legend map here if you will and that's indicated by the band on one side it points to the negative side so make sure you put them in in the correct orientation when replacing them Okay, this one the hole is still got some solder in it, a little stubborn. We're gonna try something a little different. We'll uh, eat the lead, a little fresh solder on the tip. Try and eat the lead and pad a little bit. Drop it in. And the final cleaning on our joints. We get the flux off. Make sure there's no little nuggets of solder. No bridging, which shouldn't be a problem. Bridging shouldn't be a problem. There's so much conformal coating and 
solder mask on everything. But uh, I'll get another clean Q tip to finish it off. And a final clean Q tip. And a little coating on those areas and this side as well to finish it off and put it in a vehicle and cross your fingers, right? Well, I think it'll live. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Recapping a vehicle. That's new.